I am honored to have uh, this new segment on the Earl Ingram Show. It is with the Patriotic Millionaires. And every other Monday, we're going to be joined by uh, Mr. Pierre Hollis uh, and or um, Pearl. Uh, and we'll be talking about, you know, the Patriotic Millionaires. They've written a book uh, called Tax the Rich. And you really should get it and, and, and take some time to read it because it does give you a perspective from people that we normally don't even get to hear about who have your and my interests at heart. The average everyday Joe, the hardworking Americans who have made our nation what it is, and yet these are people who, who are blessed and fortunate and don't have to struggle every day to make sure that their bills are paid, but yet they are concerned about you and I. So I am uh, beyond, you know, excited to have Mr. Pierre Hollis of the Patriotic Millionaires on the line this morning. Good, good morning to you, sir. How are you? I'm doing well, Earl. Thanks for having us on the show. I'm really excited about this this new segment, I think we're going to learn an awful lot uh, as we move forward with this. And we wanted to begin today's uh, program. Everybody talks about, we've got a great economy. The economy is doing great, man. I mean, <laughs> Calvin, you've noticed how great the economy is doing, right? Well, I hear the news about the stock market. Uh, well, well, that's, you know, when we talk about how great the economy is, at the root of it is people talking about the stock market. Calvin, how many how many stocks do you have? Do uh, you own? I currently do not have any. Okay. Well, you would be the rule and not the exception of the American people. And so uh, it is, again, with great pleasure that I introduce Mr. Pierre Hollis. Good morning to you, sir. We're going to talk a little bit about the economy. Great. Let's talk about the economy from the perspective of, you know, the patriotic millionaires. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, from the perspective that we often hear on the news, it's great, right? It's great. It's a great time to be rich. It's a great time to have a lot of money. It's a great time to have a lot of money in the stock market. I mean, what's not to love about that? I guess the only thing that's not to love about that is that it doesn't apply to most Americans, right? It, it just doesn't. So we can talk about how great it is to be wealthy, but honestly, it's always great to be wealthy. You know, it's it's not so great right now to not be wealthy. And and as a matter of fact, it hasn't been a great time to not be wealthy for a long time. So, you know, it, it, it's hard to reconcile what you hear on the news with what most people are living every day, which is putting food on the table, putting gas in, in the vehicle and, and trying to make a rent or mortgage payment. Not a great time for those folks. You know, I was looking at the definition of, you know, uh, Wikipedia's definition of what the economy is and put it this way. An economic system is any of the ways in which humankind has arranged for its material provisioning. Now, that's, that's not the way we see the average person sees the economy. Can you explain that in English? For us? Yeah, I wish I could. I wish I could. <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's odd that that we have chosen to center our definition here in the United States on stock market performance. It, it's a really odd way of looking at things. And, and we've been doing this for quite a while. You know, we talk about unemployment numbers. We talk about uh, the stock market. We talk about a couple of other things. And, and most of those things kind of ring hollow to folks, you know, if you already have a job, you're not terribly concerned with what the um, unemployment rate is, right? You already got a job, right? And, uh, you know, so so if you don't have a job, great. But, you know, a lot of people have two or three jobs. So telling them about low unemployment isn't helping them. It's just telling them that there's, you know, fewer jobs out there to maybe shift to. But, yeah. You know, you and I were talking about this before we went on the air. And I said to you, um, I remember when George uh, Bush Jr. was the president and the Dow Jones was at 6,800 
and before President Barack Obama came into office and there was lamenting about how bad things were mm-hmm. going in the economy. And now it's over 40,000. And, and the average American is saying, hey, inflation is killing me. Right. I, right. I'm not able to move forward. So is it safe to say that we're better off with a Democrat in the office or a Republican in the office when it comes to the economy? And well, the benefit you know, that, of the average citizen? The, the, the truth of the matter is it, it almost doesn't matter who's in office. It almost doesn't matter who's in office because we've had great economies with Democratic presidents, great economies, and, and the same with Republicans. But the commonality uh, uh, amongst, uh, you know, either party is the rich always do better, you know, and, and things always get even better and better for the wealthy. Uh, and, and so it almost doesn't matter who's in charge uh, because the root issues are just simply not being addressed. Right. Well, so who's so although the average citizen is the majority in this, how can we, we don't seem to have the ability to change the trajectory of the economy that we're living in. Right. You know, I think there's, there's, there's two problems, right? There's, there's two kind of aspects of this. Number one, I think some people don't realize how unfair the system is, right? They, they know that they're suffering and they hear about other people who aren't suffering, but I don't think most people realize how inherently biased the system is towards rewarding the wealthy. If they knew the shenanigans that were going on, and we talk about some of this in our book, if they knew what was going on, they would be outraged. So that's thing number one. Most folks don't realize how rigged, I'll say rigged, the economy is against anyone who's not wealthy. That's thing number one. Thing number two is most people don't know how to do anything about it. They don't know how to make their voice heard. They feel powerless. Some people say they're not even going to vote because it doesn't matter. Hey, I just said it doesn't matter who's in power, right? Doesn't matter who's in power. So maybe they hear that and they stop listening and they figure, well, doesn't matter who's in power. I'm not going to vote. That's not what we're saying. We're saying you got to make your voice heard. And it doesn't matter if it's a Democrat or a Republican. You need to make your voice heard. You need to be educated on how the system is rigged and you need to know how to make your voice heard. And that's that's what we're trying to do here. You know, you know, uh, Mr. Hollis, you're in my generation um, has been pretty fortunate that, as I said to you before, the majority of the people from your and my generation were able to live the American dream, yeah. to own a home, to send their kids to college, to go on a vacation. We're not talking about opulent things, but yeah. we were able to take advantage of a nation that was able to provide those things for the majority of its citizenry, but that has long since gone away. Yeah. And, and so the generations that have come after us, we've got to fight for them to have that opportunity. Am, am I, am I right about that? Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And, 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 you know, so love my generation, right? Who doesn't love their generation? But, but the truth is, you know, we've been taking care of number one, which is ourselves for a while. And we've right. not been focused on the younger generation, we like to complain that they, you know, this, that, and the other, and crazy kids, and they don't work hard. That that's not true at all. They work very, very hard. Uh, and what we have left them with is a situation that is untenable, unsustainable, and and the future for them is pretty bleak. You know, and, you know, and that's our fault. That is our fault. Well, you know, not to mention tremendous debt. Yes. Uh, we we and 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 so if if nothing else. What we should do is make sure that's wiped away yeah. to give them a firm playing field to address the other issues. But with that tremendous debt that they're facing and faced with, it's almost impossible, you know, for them to even be able to turn these other things around because of the heavy debt. Yeah, you know, it, we we talked about how, how things were different back when you and I were growing up in, in our formative years. You know, when you look at most metrics, right? Productivity, worker productivity has been going up, 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 constantly going up. Uh, corporate profits going up. CEO pay going up. Right? Those are good things. Maybe not the CEO pay. You know what hasn't been going up? Uh, minimum wage hasn't been going up. Uh, uh, you know what else has been going up? Tuition's been going up. 
interest rates have been going up, mortgages have been going up, all those bad things have also been going up. But the one good thing that could have been going up, minimum wage, those types of things, those are not going up. Those are flat. And so you get this gap between how things were and how things are, and the gap just keeps getting bigger and bigger. You know, um, this is just great stuff. And I could talk to you for the entire two hours of the show and still be longing for more information from you. But we'll 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 have to put those things together right. in an extrapolated period of time uh, over the months. Uh, but I will say red, whiteville and blue democracy is up next with uh, Pierre Hollis of the Patriotic Millionaires on a Monday edition of a Motown Monday edition of the Earl Ingram show. 844-967-2789 is the number. All right, welcome back to a Motown Monday on the Earl Ingram show. As always, you can join us at 844-967-2789. You can text us at that same number. And I am really thrilled to have on the line, Mr. Pierre Hollis, he is with the Patriotic Millionaires this morning. Every other Monday, we're going to have the pleasure of having the Patriotic Millionaires on the Earl Ingram Show. So make sure you, you know, write it down on your calendars or on the, in, uh, put a note on your refrigerator that the Patriotic Millionaires are going to be appearing on the show. Um, let's talk about this catchy phrase, <laughs> uh, you know, Mr. Hollis. Uh, red, whiteville, and blue democracy. What what are you referring to, sir? Yeah, so so uh, we have this program that we started about, uh, I guess, two years ago now. It's called the Great Economy Project, where we go into communities and we educate folks. We provide training and education on the economy and how people can advocate for themselves. And so the first... Uh, uh, the first, uh, the pilot program, if you will, took place in a uh, in a place called Whiteville, North Carolina, and uh, and and so we've been working with the folks there in Whiteville for about two years, and we were documenting the 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 process. Uh, we didn't know how it was going to turn out, but but we had a we had a crew there, a film crew, and uh, they were just conducting interviews, uh, recording hours and hours of video, and uh, in the end, they put together a, a, a documentary. And the documentary is called Red, Whiteville, and Blue. And it, and it just talks about the work that we were trying to do uh, down in Whiteville. But more importantly, it talks about the members of that community that came together and decided that things needed to change and they were going to be the instrument of that change. And that's what the movie's about. You know, let me, there seems to be in this, in this country a divide between urban and rural uh, America. And, and I never can understand why, because they both suffer from the exact same torment. Right. <laughs> and, and, and yet we, where we should be mobilizing and coming together to fight the same instances that cause us the pain where somebody's working to divide us. Your thoughts. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, that's that is an age old strategy. It's called divide and conquer. Everybody's heard of it. Right. You know, and that's what we see a lot of in politics today. We see a lot of these uh, folks that want to divide people and get them to argue amongst each other uh, as a distraction, really. Uh, so they not concentrated on the things that really matter. So we see the urban rural divide. We see the, you know, Democrats versus Republican divide. We see uh, all sorts of what I would think, uh, you know, artificial divides uh, as a distraction. It's it, it's about money. It's about power. That's what it's all about. And everything else is is a distraction. And and we said earlier, you know, I said earlier that it doesn't matter who's in power uh, because they all work towards the same thing, which is keeping themselves in power and getting more money. You know, and and if people would stop falling into this artificial construct of of you know left versus right, rural versus urban, and just realize that everybody's getting cheated. Like everybody's getting cheated out of the benefits of this economy. Uh, and, and, and as soon as folks realize that, and folks in Whiteville know that, they know that. And so we've got Democrats, we've got Republicans, we've got independents all working together to fix the economy. Because in our belief, 
once the economy is fixed, everything else is going to get fixed. You know, Mr. Hollis, if people would think that people who are wealthy should should not even think outside, and this is what we've been led to believe and what we've seen, is people who are, are so wealthy, not all, but far too many, don't even recognize the the other citizens of the nation. And yeah. And they and they fail to understand that, you know, they don't live on an island by themselves. You know, the you can't you can't totally ignore humanity, right? And live in your glass house and tower and say, well, I don't, we don't care much about those people. But yet we are in a a harrowing place right now. Is it safe to say that? How do we yeah. get out of that? Yeah. Well, you know, I. It, it, understand what the situation is and and find a way to deal with it and and find a way to find your voice band together with people who maybe don't look like you there's racial divides all kinds of divides right but understand what the problem is and and the situation we're in right now is unsustainable it is unsustainable when we continue to allow wealth and money and power be concentrated in the hands of very very few people that is just bad for the nation it, it's bad for everyone uh, so, yeah, we need to get out of our bubbles. We need to see what's really going on. We need to understand that wealthy people are are rigging the economy every day and 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 they're not going to stop on their own. Right. There's a couple of people, you know, a couple of wealthy folks that that realize the problem and are trying to fix it. But a good number of wealthy folks are just happy with the way it is, uh, not recognizing, you know, they're, they're running off a cliff themselves. So, so money in politics, you know, it's always been difficult to, to even get around the wealth that has been accumulated in this nation. And a lot of that wealth has really been accumulated over the last 30 years. Yeah. Right. I mean, there were wealthy people before. Now we're talking about ungodly wealthy people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got more billionaires than we've ever had, and we're about to have a trillionaire probably in the next 10, 20 years. It's unbelievable. And then you hear people say, well, um, you know, Elon Musk is going to be a trillionaire, and they get all excited. And I say, my God, one man should not have a trillion dollars when so many people go to bed hungry and homeless. Right. What is wrong with us as uh, humanity. What what is wrong with that? You know, it, it it's amazing because this this nation was founded because people were tired of a monarchy, right? They were tired right. of a monarchy. They didn't want a king, a wealthy king, making all the rules. So we we came to the United States. We formed the United States. We made a democracy, and now we're turning it into the same thing we left. Instead of kings, now we have oligarchs. We have wealthy people who are just going to run the show, just like kings. You know, that's what we tried to get away from. Well, I'll tell you, uh, you know, Mr. Hollis, I, I wish I had more time with you. And we will as time goes on, uh, because there's so many different things to talk about. Uh, it's great to know that there's a group like you guys, and hopefully you can you can encourage others like yourselves to come on board. Are you having any success in that? A little bit, you know, uh, <laughs> a little bit. But I got to tell you, a, a, a lot of wealthy people think we're crazy. Yeah, I'm they sure they crazy. do. <laughs> well, we well, well, we are thankful to have you guys around. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Thank you. Uh, this is a beginning, not an end. And we're excited to have you guys, the Patriotic Millionaires, Every other Monday on the Earl Ingram Show, that's Mr. Pierre Hollis. Tell all the other guys we said hello, and thank you for fighting for us. Thank you, sir.